Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for the very last astrology reading of 2020. Uh, my name is Vicki Verley, I am the Rock and Roll Prophetess. I do psychic astrology and tarot, and I also do channeling. Uh, we're going to take a look today at the full moon in Cancer, at 8 degrees of Cancer. And this is occurring on December 29th, 2020, 1028 p.m. Eastern Time, but times are going to vary. And... Um, it's the last chart of the year, and it's the, the next, uh, in the, we just have the two eclipses. So now we're going to have this uh, extra full moon this month. And um, it's kind of nice. It's kind of finishing up the year. I just get a really calm, nice, nice feeling about it. That's, that's just my overall uh, energy. A calm, really calm, nice feeling just sort of came over me, just like real, like just a few minutes ago. I don't know what it is, but I like it. <laughs> I like it, and I like. I want some more of it, or however that goes. I love it, and I want some more of it. Yeah, and, you know, the Cancer full moon is that real peaceful nature. When I think of the Cancer energy, I, I always think of, I th even though I think it might be like the chariot in the tarot, um, I just happen to have my little mini tarot deck here, but I think of the Empress, you know, because it's the mother... It's the energy of the mother and the home and abundance and peace. And it's like, it's leading into this, here she is. We're, we're leading into this new year, you know, this, this new, um, I guess we're not going to be able to see him too well. <laughs> I could turn the spider light on for a second. There we go. There she is, the empress. Yeah, that says that real Empress vibe, you know, it's the, uh, it's like the quiet time, it's the quiet time, um, almost New Year's Eve, if we celebrate that, I think just about everybody does, um, and it's just this very quiet time, and there's like a, a kind of hush all over the world tonight, <laughs> of people falling in love, right, isn't that the lyric? There's a kind of hush all over the world. And that's the energy that I'm getting from this. And just, or like the energy of, you know, you've got a fire going or a nice meal cooking in the home. And you go outside and it's that, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, where, where the, uh, you know, where it snows. And you go outside and there's that crispy snow and it's just quiet. And yeah, that's the energy that's really coming forward with this for me. Um, yeah, so it is in the sign of Cancer, motherhood, emotions. Uh, the full moon in the Cancer, I think, even though it's not an eclipse, I feel like it's one of the most potent, potent and powerful because the moon is a natural ruler of the Cancer um, energy, right? So it's, it's empowered in its own sign. There's an actual word for that, but I'm not, I can't recall it right at this moment. I'm looking here, and of course, it, it, because it's a full moon, it is opposing the sun. And it's also, there's a square going on with Chiron. So it could be this really healing stuff, too. You know, I think a lot of times, especially in the United States, probably worldwide, but we get into this holiday season, and it's such a frenzy. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we get stressed out, and um, we get triggered by people and our family, and, you know, these different things. And this is a time, this kind of an energy, even though it's a square, this, because this reminds me of that, this in air, in the sign of Aries, Chiron and Aries, this brings to mind of this, like getting triggered by family members and different things. You know, we could really fall into a, a deep healing and an understanding, you know, potentially for what is, uh, you know, what it's all about what's really going on from a higher perspective and come at it, you know, with a more loving and nurturing energy. It's also sextiling Uranus and then the sun is trining Uranus. So Uranus is also highly evolved, involved in this reading. But it's, you know, it's interesting that I had to slip the tongue, so-called Freudian slip, and said uh, evolved because that the Uranian energy well, it's very present because we've got the Jupiter-Saturn. That's, you know, that's all part of the Iranian energy going into Aquarius here. The Iranian energy, and we have Jupiter and Saturn have just, and they're still conjunct, we're, we're still in that uh, Aquarius vibe, the Iranian energy. And the Iranian energy is um, that of um, 
you know, moving forward, looking at things from a higher perspective, evolved. Evolving past, falling into our old patterns. I just watched some show, I can't think of even what it was. It might have been on Apple. Um, but it was about mother and daughter. Well, it was about a lot of things, but one of the things featured in the show, this is the mother, too, you know. But mother can be representative of your family. You know, we're going to all be probably seeing a lot of our families during this time frame. Hopefully, or at least, you know, with COVID, but be in contact with them. Um, and she's, the girl says in the, in the show, in the movie, she says, you know, I don't know why I, I turn into the worst version of my 14-year-old self when I'm around my mother. And, you know, that's it. We fall into these patterns like that, you know. And, and like, you would never talk, talk to your mother or talk to your friends or, you know, you would never behave this way <laughs> towards anybody else. But when you get in with these family dynamics, these things just really come up. Because this is the, this Cancerian energy is the home and family. So instead of going to war about it or, or, or getting her dander up or getting in fights and arguments and anger popping up, you know, we can go to this peaceful place. We can evolve, evolve past it, you know, to the next level of human consciousness. Um, and just looking at things in a different way, you know, seeing things in a different way, seeing things from a, don't fall into your worst version of your 14 year old self. <laughs> you know, we don't have to do that. We don't have to go there. Uh, we could come into the best version of our humanitarian self or, you know, the best version of our, you know, human body or human incarnation 2.0 or something, you know, <laughs> as we're upgrading into this Aquarian energy. And that's really what it is. It's a big upgrade, you know. Um, so, yeah, with the Iranian energy continuing on that theme, the Saturn-Jupiter is in there. It's in there, baby. Uh, we, we're going to, as I'm recording this, we're, I'm in the throes of it. It was yesterday was the uh, eclipse. And then we're going to still, we're still yet to have the Saturn um, and the sol This is pre-solstice. I'm recording this on the 16th, 15th. So we just had the eclipse yesterday. But by the time we get into here, we're going to have that conjunction on the solstice as they move in. They're moving in on the 17th and 19th, and we're going to have the conjunction on the solstice. This, we're in it. We're in it to win it. That's what came through really strong. And yes, we are in it to win it. You know, we are in it to win it. Um, you know, the things that come through with my guides and the channeling, I've got the one book already published, and I'm well into, I'm over 100 pages into the second book. I'm doing it all the time now. Um, and I post, if you're interested in that, there are a few video excerpts, and I posted a, a Year Ahead 2021 little channel bit um, that's also on my channel, my YouTube channel, if you want to look at it and listen to it. But at any rate, you know, this is, uh, you know, this we're going through this upgrade. And this is, um, you know, we've tried this on other timelines and it, and it has not happened. Um, they're saying, you know, the guides are coming through with that. It's just new for everybody. It's new for all of us. Although there's been planets or I forget what they call them, Terra beings. That's what they call the planets have been, you know, upgraded from 3D to 4D to 5D. You know, we, that kind of thing has gone on, you know, many, many times. It's never quite the exact same situation. It's never happened in this 3D reality. And all the... They're showing me, like, all the layers that are attached to it. Because they also always tell me that as we progress, they progress as well. This is a group effort. And that is the... Um, the energy of the 11th house and the Aquarius energy. It's the, it's the group effort. And it's galactic. You know, Uranus is absolutely galactic. You know, it's galactic. Uh, there's many le levels of existence that are, you know, all progressing, all happening together with Mother Earth Gaia, the Terra being that she is, the beautiful Terra princess. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> Yeah, so it's on. It's on. The Aquarian age is on. Um, and, you know, this peacefully allowing, that's what this, this uh, full moon could really bring about. Peacefully allowing. Instead of fighting against what we don't want, 
instead of calling people out and getting in, getting turning into our 14 year old selves, the worst version of our 14 year old selves, um, we could peacefully allow, fuel, put, stoke that fire, stoke that hearth, you know, that's the energy, it's not, it's water energy, not fire, but the water rules our emotional states. So we have a, we get our emotional states into a calm place of allowing, and we we are facilitators one and all. That's yeah, we are, we are facilitators one and all. They say that a lot, one and all too. That might be like a little, it might be something I've even said in the book before, but it's coming back up right now. Yeah, so we are facilitators one and all, and we can do this in our peaceful home environment where a lot of us are in quarantine and we're home and. You know, this Aries energy can be restless, and wants to get out and do and go and do things. And Mars is in its own sign of Aries, stoking that, talk about stoking that fire. You know, that's that fire's getting stoked, all right, baby. Um, but, you know, it's peacefully allowing. Um, I want to look at the nodes, too, but I also want to, first of all, while we're still on this um, topic or this flow of peacefully allowing, Neptune is still, con I think it was conjunct the part of fortune in the last reading. I'm not sure, but Neptune is definitely conjunct the part of fortune in this reading. And, you know, the best expression, the most highest expression of the Neptune energy is peacefully allowing would be right up there. You know, that would be right in, right in the pocket on that one. That's right in Neptune's wheelhouse. <laughs> peacefully allowing, Neptune says, yeah, I got this, that's me. So Neptunian, you know, and Neptunian is the psychic and the spiritual realm. Neptune is the your dream state. Um, Neptune is creativity. I found so much solace through creativity. I'm really getting back into art. Not that I never was, I never abandoned art, obviously. You know, I just, I've, my deck, I'm revamping the tarot deck, too, if anybody's interested. I'll talk about that another time, but... Um, just doing old-fashioned art, I guess, not digital. You know, I got my pastels out, I got my paints out, and I've been really doing, like, hands-on artwork, which I really have gotten real far away from since the advent of, you know, uh, Photoshop and, you know, Illustrator and, you know, paint programs and stuff. I've been pretty more, I've been really digital for more than 20 years now, and I'm during this time frame, I've been really getting back into that. That's an expression of Neptune, you know. And music is, you know, and doing music. That's always ever-present with me, but... Um, and I find a lot of peace in it. I really find a lot of peace in it. And there's all sorts of cool things out there these days, too. I don't want to name anyone specific, but there's a whole bunch of really cool ones where it's, it's there, you do this healing work, you know, and you... It's, it, it's intentionally healing, you know. Um, one of them is called intentional creativity, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, but it's, you know, you, you're working through in ways that you don't even see or know. It's not, it's a very unconscious or subconscious thing, and that's totally the realm of Neptune. This peacefully allowing, yeah. Okay, so talking about Neptune, the part of fortune at 18, 19 degrees, they're squaring with the nodes. And right when, when I open this chart, because I never look at them ahead of time, I like to just be spontaneous and be right in the flow. I don't do a lot of rigid, you know, calculating things out ahead of time. It's just a, it's a psychic reading, you know. Um, but when I open this, because I've been doing so many of these year ahead readings for everybody, those are available too. I saw that 19 Gemini. I know for a fact that we are having an eclipse at that point. So I feel like there's going to be some connection to um, this time frame and the upcoming eclipse it's going to be I've, i don't have it in front of me I, for some reason I, I can't find it but um it's june well actually i do have it here it is uh it's the june 10th uh solar eclipse is at 19 degrees of gemini 1947 and this the note is at 1957 right here so this is definitely um there's going to be a connection between this time frame and then in June. So I think, especially because it's the North Node, and the North Node is always what we're striving for or working toward, I feel that um, in this, if you can envelop this peace, and it, through the in, inner peace, may come a spark. May, may come, it's a full moon, so some enlightenment may be shown upon 
a path for us all to take, but yet individually. And then I think for a lot of us, these paths that we're, you know, we're considering, 19 degrees, you know, June 10th is that solar eclipse new moon. It could really be initiated then. It might be in the planning stages and it might be really initiated then. But what I'm hearing is it'll have a strong foothold by then. So for many of us, especially if that's something close in your nail chart, if you have something that's at 19 degrees. Now we're going to look at the other end of it. The south node is at 19, conjunct Venus. So you know what that means, boys and girls, right? Lovers from the past. Past loves. Past life um, love connections. Now, you know, the south node is past lives, and, you know, Venus is love, but it's not always... Um, Oh, I'm going to make a love connection. <laughs> you know? Although, you know, again, people going home for the holidays, you might run into your high school sweetheart or somebody. You know, that, that kind of stuff could totally happen. Um, but it's, it's anybody that we love. It's not, you have soulmates, I always say, you know, so you have soulmates in all shapes and sizes. And so it's not, um, your soulmates are not all, all your, just your lovers. And Venus is, only, is not only the expression of romantic love. South Node, like I was just saying, I'm getting really back into hands-on art again. It could be your creative passion from the past. It doesn't have to be art. It could be anything. It could be some sort of creative self-expression. I'm picking up, for some of you, this is some kind of fashion thing or something. Or somebody used to really love fashion and clothes and putting outfits together, and um, they're going to get back into doing that again. Or maybe you're at, pulling out, at your parents' house, pulling out all your old clothes and looking them over. I don't know, but I, I, that was just an odd thing that came through for somebody. Uh, a random thing, I guess not odd, but kind of random, kind of individualized. But anyways, yeah, so, and be aware that because the South Node is conjunct Venus, even if something shows up and it's, it's like you've never met this person before or you never had did this thing before, there will be a past life connection. You know, even if it's not a person from your past in this incarnation, it could be somebody that you're you're meeting up with or connecting with on whatever level. It could be a creative collaboration. Venus is money. It could be a work project. It could be some kind of you know prosperity money sort of thing. Uh, but at any rate, people that are you're working with or coming in contact with, or there's some sort of a Venus connection through money, love, creativity. There is some past life connection if it's a person if it's something like I was just saying about like with the art and stuff like that it could be you know maybe you've done this kind of thing and you know this is an accumulative uh, talent and I think for you know many cases it is in many cases you have maybe you have been an artist or a writer or uh, you know or an inventor even you know with all this Uranian energy invention stoking that invention thing big time you know that's really that's really on it's really, I keep wanting to say on fire. Maybe because I'm burning about, I have two different kinds of sage and a couple candles going. <laughs> I got like little fires going here, I don't know. Because this is very watery. We do have the Mars and Chiron, but it's, it's a very watery energy with the full moon and then the, the Neptune is really strong too. And then we're also, we're moving into air, you know, we're moving into this air energy. Yeah, let me see if real quickly if I'm missing anything. Well, we have Mars square Pluto, but it's like, well, what else is new? You know, pretty much. <laughs> We've been having this Capricorn Aries planet squaring each other forever. We had Uranus squaring Pluto for a long time, and you know, uh, so I mean, that's that is present, you know. And there still could be, you know, we're gonna we're gonna take down the patriarchy and all that. But we got it, like Lenny Kravitz says, we gotta let love rule. You know, gotta let love rule for sure. You know. That's the ticket. That's the way. Love is the way. Love is the answer. Like Todd Rundgren says. The part of fortune is sticking with Neptune, and the highest expression of Neptune is love. Venus is love. The Cancerian energy is love of home and family, mother love, you know. So that is the answer. Is there other things going on? Is there irritants? Could there be, you know... Could we entertain this notion or entertain this energy? You know, I'm certainly some people will. But by staying in this peacefully allowing, that's just the coming through so strong. Peacefully allowing, that's the ticket. 
that is the way to move forward, that is the way, um, it's like putting out the fire, you know, it's like putting that fire out, you know, it's just like soothing it, you know, it's what's, whatever's got you, we used to say in the old, in the old days, <laughs> We used to say, oh, that really, that, oh, burned. Burned meant pissed off. I can't even think of how I would use it in a sentence right now, but burned meant, like, pissed off. So if you're scorched, you're burned. The soothing energy of water. And it's not even, it's, nev it's definitely not a thing that is directed outward. You know, because nobody, when you're pissed off or in the middle of, you know, being really frustrated or pissed off, the last thing you want is somebody to say is, oh, calm down. You know, calm down. You know, that just s stokes you up. It's radiating this from within. Cancers go in their shell and it's this within energy. You know, and it's the mother, it's within the womb. You know, it's that kind of vibe. So, Neptune is inward. You know, this is inward energy. It's not, Mars is outward expression, yeah. But it's inward. And then when it's inward, it just radiates out you get in this calm vibe and you just exude it. You know, that's like that Empress energy. She's just exuding that good stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Uranus is trying the sun. I'm just looking. This is a, the Aspectarian, if you're not familiar. Mercury is conjunct the sun, is it? Yeah, it's a wide orb. I really, I think that's not so tight there. I mean, it is. It could be, you could, you know, you could, if you wanted to clear the air, you, there could be, you know, clear communication with that kind of an aspect. We got a lot of squares here. Venus is squaring Neptune. We talked about that. Mars was squaring Saturn. Is Mars squaring Saturn? Yeah, it's a, it's a wide orb too. Mars is squaring Saturn, and Chiron's squaring Saturn too. Well, it's it's this Aries's energy is squaring this area up here. You know, the tenth and the eleventh. And it's just like I said, you know, we could still, there's going to be people who are still carrying on and still yelling and wanting to keep the fight going, you know. And you can choose to participate or not. You know, I choose not. I choose not to participate in that. And since I've taken that stance, you know, I've just, uh, it's really helped my, my, you know, emotional, physical, mental well-being. <laughs> Even if the most, I see the most outlandish things, you know, because I don't know if this rules social media, but I've deemed that it does. I associate the Aquarian energy with social media. Could be ninth house too, because that's publishing, but I, I associate really more 11th Aquarian energy with it. Well, uh, well, anyways, you know, and Mercury would be in there too. You know, when I see these outrageous things in social media, you know, I just, you know, keep on scrolling. Just scroll on by. And I don't get upset. I don't, I don't get, I don't even get, you know, in my own, like with the, I don't get judgmental, like, oh, they're such an asshole. They just, oh, you know, I don't get disgusted or judgmental or I'm just like, yeah, just keep going and stay, stay in my peace, stay in my grace. Grace is a big word for this, for this chart and for this time. Be of grace, be of grace and heart. Yeah, I like that. All right, so, I mean, I think that's basically my message. I'm, there may be some astrology things that I miss, but, it, you know, if you've never seen my, my stuff before, I do understand astrology, but this is a psychic reading, and I use the astrology chart just sort of as a scrying tool or a jumping-off point, and I definitely color outside the lines quite a bit. Um, I am still open as of today. If you want to get your year ahead reading, it is my most popular reading of the year. It's a psychic reading. I do start out by looking at um, your chart and the big upcoming any kind of astrology events. And then we do a real long tarot, psychic tarot reading with the four quarters of the year and animal totem. So it's the only uh, astrology and tarot reading that I do offer, I think. So it's always really popular. If you're interested, please check it out. Check out my book, um, The uh, Transmissions for Humanity. You know, people who are looking into it uh, are really liking it. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback if you're interested in these times uh, and, you know, higher guidance from the transitional times that we're in. There's a lot of that information and just a lot of other information and just questions I've always had and I, I was asking, asking them questions and stuff. So, 
All right, so thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you, I appreciate you oh so much for all the things you do for the entire year by liking and sharing and commenting and donating to my channel. I have a Patreon channel. If you enjoy this content, please do hit the subscribe button. Remember that you are beloved and beauty incarnate. Have a great full moon in Cancer and a great holiday season and a happy new year. And we'll see you again soon. Bye.